So 1.4, there's only one thing we're going to do in this section, which is why it's brief, but as I say, it's also important. We're going to define a matrix times a vector. So if we have a matrix A and a vector X, we're going to define their product. But I should walk that back a little. We're going to define their product sometimes. A matrix times a vector is not always defined. And whether or not it is defined depends entirely on the dimensions. This is why I said it was so important to get that row by column notation down. A matrix A as M by N, so M rows, N columns, for this product to be defined, this vector needs to be N by one. In other words, these dimensions have to match. They have to be the same. And we'll see why when we define this matrix vector multiplication. And when you see this multiplication defined, it's not going to be probably the most intuitive thing in the world, why we would want to define this operation this way. Yeah. But we'll spend the rest of the semester seeing basically applications of this definition. So by the time we're done, there won't be any doubt that this is a good definition to have. So something that often happens in this class is that we're thinking of matrices. Let me, let me go a little further down. Something that often happens in this class is that we'll think of matrices as being basically vector storage units. So like, I guess I don't really have any good examples written down, but if we have like the matrix one, two, four, three, seven, eight, we can think of that as the vector one, three, the vector two, seven, and the vector four, eight sitting next to each other in storage. And this is going to be how we define matrix vector multiplication. We'll think of the matrix A as being a bunch of column vectors sitting next to each other. And we multiply A by X by a vector X. And this vector X has as many entries as there are vectors in this storage unit. You see, we have n vectors sitting next to each other. This vector has n entries. And that is precisely this condition, that those inner dimensions have to match. 
And we're going to define a matrix by a vector to be a linear combination of vectors. In particular, this matrix times this vector is going to be a linear combination of the columns of the matrix with these numbers, x1, x2, up to xn, providing the weights of the linear combination. If this isn't immediately clear, I think it's one of those things where you see just one example and then, oh, that's how this works. Let's multiply one, two, three, zero, zero, negative one by the vector one, two, zero. To do this multiplication, we're going to think of this matrix as three vectors sitting next to each other. We'll multiply the first vector by the first entry. So one, times the vector one is zero, two times the vector two is zero, zero times the vector three, negative one. And then that's what? That's the vector one zero plus the vector four zero plus the vector zero zero. So this is the vector five. Ooh, five, zero. Going back to when we talked about the dimension, a matrix times a vector is another vector. These inner dimensions match, so we can do the multiplication. The outer dimensions give us the dimensions of the product. So going back to this example, well, it's kind of cramped, but we had a two by three matrix times a three by one vector. Those three is matched, so we were able to do the multiplication. And that two and that one are reflected by the fact that this is a two by one vector. As I say, this definition is not probably intuitive, but this definition of multiplication does have some of the properties you would expect multiplication to have. The Big property, some of you have either of you taken out and either have any of you taken algebra with Mr. Vogel yet? No, 
So this is a big property that multiplication kind of has to have if we want to call it multiplication. That multiplication really needs to distribute over addition. And in spite of the unnatural way or seemingly unnatural way that this um, multiplication is defined, multiplication does distribute over addition. We also have the property that we can move scalars around. So if V is a vector, then C times V is also a vector. And assuming the dimensions match, A times CV is a perfectly valid thing to write. We can take that C and move it around. What we cannot do, we'll come back to this later, but I'll say it for the first time now, what we cannot do is commute the matrix and the vector. That is to say, we cannot write V times A. We are not used to order mattering when we multiply stuff, but here order matters. Let's immediately relate this back to um, back to vectors and also back to systems. I, uh, in my um, previous today, I kept accidentally saying matrix equations when I meant vector equations. I mean, you can have a matrix times an unknown vector equals a known vector. And you can try, you can want to solve equations that look like this. And the good news is that once again, we're not going to learn any new techniques here. Just like we did with uh, vector equations, we can solve matrix equations using Gauss-Jordan elimination. And that's because vector equations are matrix equations. Let me, let me get rid of that V and let me write an full unknown vector, V1, V2. This matrix equation from the way we have defined and um, matrix vector multiplication, this matrix equation is also a vector equation. If we just do the multiplication on the left, we wind up with that. So we have a matrix equation, which is the same as a vector equation, which can be solved by performing Gauss-Jordan elimination on an augmented matrix. 
So we have these three kinds of equations at this point. We have systems of linear equations, we have vector equations, we have matrix equations. But secretly, those three different types of equations are just the same thing. This matrix equation is a vector equation, is a system of linear equations. It's, um, it's 1v1 plus 0v2 equals 7, 4v1 minus 3v2 equals 3. So this and this and this are really just three ways of writing the same thing. And they are all solved in the same way with a bit of Gauss-Jordan elimination, which we could Actually, since I have this written down, we can probably do this in our head. Multiply the first row by negative four, add it to the second row. One times negative four is negative four, plus four is zero. Zero times negative four is zero, plus negative three is negative three. Seven times negative four is negative 28, plus three is negative 25. And then Divide the second row by negative three, one, zero, seven, zero, one, twenty five thirds. So V one is seven, V two is twenty five thirds. That's the solution to all of these. Any questions about this? As I are sort of building the foundations for this class now, it's very important that nobody get lost here. Or so, I mean, I believe you when you say you don't have questions, but I hope that if you do, you won't be shy about asking them. Let's cover one more piece of material. This will be section, no, nope, same section, sorry. It's just finishing up section 1.4. And this is, this is a trick for multiplying matrices, nice matrices, without a bunch of fractions or other ugly numbers by vectors quickly. And sometimes you see this given as the definition of matrix vector multiplication. I think that's a mistake. I'll have more to say about that in a moment. But to do this multiplication, well, we've defined it, first of all. It's this column times one plus this column times two, plus this column times negative one. But there's another way you can do this. You can say, okay, this is three by three. This is three by one. So the result is going to be three by one. 
So the resulting vector is going to have three components. And we can find these components one by one using the following way. To find the first component, we're going to take the first row of the matrix. And then we're going to do some multiplication and addition. We're going to multiply this one and this one, this two and this two, this three and this negative one. And we're going to add those together. And assuming that your numbers are nice and you don't have a bunch of ugly fractions, and assuming that the matrix and the vector are small enough, once you've done this a few times, it becomes really quick. One, four, negative three. So one plus four is five, minus three is two. You can just sort of reel those off. Zero times one, one times two, two times negative one. Well, again, once you sort of do this a few times, you can just reel this off. Zero plus two is two, minus two is zero. Then for the third, and three, you use the third row. One times one, one times two, two times negative one, then add those together. So one plus two is three, minus two is one. And this is almost always once you get a little practice with it, this is almost always going to be much faster to do than writing down all of the entries in this sum. And then doing the scalar multiplication and stuff by hand. It's, it's the same number of flops. It's formally speaking the same number of operations. But if you're going to use the definition, you have to write everything down. You can't really do a bunch of stuff in your head with the definition. Whereas this one plus four is five, minus three is two, we just did that in our head. So it's because it involves less writing that it's quicker, not because it involves fewer operations. So I say you sometimes see this, like in some undergraduate textbooks, you see this used as the definition of a matrix times a vector, which I think is a pretty serious mistake. The way we have defined a matrix times a vector, it's really clear that this and this are the same thing. And it's really clear that this and this are the same thing. So it really makes the relationships between these types of equality is obvious. This sort of shortcut definition I gave you is quick to do, but I don't think it provides any intuition about the equalities in question. If you defined matrix vector multiplication this way, and then you said that, of course, this matrix vector product is the same as this vector equality, it's 
is it? It's not obvious, or at least it's not to me. I was, I was in graduate school by the time someone finally explained the definition of matrix vector multiplication that I'm giving you that's in our textbook. And I, oh, that makes sense. Finally, I understand so many things. So we'll leave this here. Let me let me end the recording.